with it and then the plug pulls apart uh, it's got something like that you'll you'll know what it is when you see it because it's they're two big big plugs uh, so keep that in mind you will have to send them that all right the last and final hurdle with the swap is the exhaust uh, once again you have the option you can either buy it pre-made or you can make it I chose to make mine uh, essentially what this entails is doing something a little like this sorry my lights kind of playing tricks with me originally on 99% of three fours the exhaust drops down on the passenger side well on a 3.0 equipped vehicle it drops down on the driver's side so you will have to take it and I'm trying to figure out how I should position this to have y'all see it but essentially what I did is I you can see my shitty ass weld uh, I ground the factory weld down like it is on that right side I ground the factory weld down around the pipe to where the pipe finally fell out I did that on this flange and the flange that is up on the engine yeah you're not really going to be able to see it but anyways uh then you have to cut the pipe into three different places where it arches uh if you want a really good reference or how to how to do this there's a thread on yoda tech i can't remember who did the thread uh but it i followed it step by step and it is probably the best way to do it uh like I said, it's on Yoda Tech. I can't remember if you put in like 3-4 crossover something or another in the 3-4 swap section, you should be able to find it. Uh, what else? Okay, those are your three main challenges with this. I mean, it's it, they're not big challenges, but they're enough to, if you're doing it all yourself, they're enough to kind of throw you through a loop. Now, I'm going to come clean and say I didn't do a whole lot of this as far as fabricating stuff. I didn't do it myself. Uh, like for example your fuel, fuel line power steering line radiator hoses I just kind of went through off-road solutions and pretty much bought the radiator hose kit um, let's see their fuel line kit which is this which includes or you need to buy this union too uh, most trucks will have it uh, but usually it's all corroded and stuff. I had to soak this thing in like PB Blaster for three days to get it off. So I just would go ahead and buy a new one of these. It's like five bucks, I think. Uh, yeah, the fuel line, which is an awesome quality hose. I will give them that. It's rubbing on my fender well. I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, and where I don't know if you can see it from here. that the power steering hose it's your high pressure power steering line uh, I bought all that stuff from off-road solutions uh, just because this thing was in my driveway for probably about a month not even a month it's probably two or three weeks I was really just going for expediency I really didn't want this thing sitting in the driveway any longer than I had to uh, so that's kind of why I spent the seven eight hundred dollars on the stuff and it was well worth it uh, the other thing is, you'll notice the air intake's here. Normally on a 3.0 vehicle, the battery's here. That will have to get moved over here. Off-Road Solutions also sells this sweet-ass battery tray. It's got a hold down on it. Yeah, it's about 80 bucks, but it pretty much bolts right in. There's a couple of holes down there you can either drill out or weld it to, whatever you want to do with it. But it fits in there pretty well. Uh, I'm using the stock 3.0 radiator, uh, 3.0 fan shroud, which is fairly loose, and I think I even used the 3.0 fan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, uh, what else? Oh yeah, I did. Going back to the air intake, I did have an air box on this. An air box will fit here, and it looks pretty cool because it looks all factory and stuff. But once again, this is where I came in to get all your parts out of the same vehicle. Uh, this engine came with the MAF, but a 99 style MAF is a drop in, just regular sensor, whereas this, this whole entire piece here is the MAF sensor. So this doesn't fit in the 99 
I think it's like 98 and up air boxes. You have to have some the other air box, which I haven't been able to find yet. So I'm kind of left with this janky setup. Uh, let's see. What else? Your throttle cable fits like factory. The only thing you will have to do is take this bracket, if I can put, keep the phone on it. Uh, this bracket needs to be bent this way. It Originally, I think it sticks up like this. You'll need to bend it out that way. So if this thing is even held open about that much, you'll have an high, a high idle issue and you'll be wondering where your high idle's at. That's probably where it's at. If you don't have any vacuum leaks, that is. Um, other than that, I haven't got my AC hooked up yet. Uh, I have to get new lines made for it because the ones that I have just aren't they're not fitting right. They're kind of kinky and stuff. I don't want to hook it up without it or with them kinked up. Might have a buildup of pressure or whatever. Uh, to get your tack working, you will have to have, I think it's a 10,000 ohm resistor. You'll have to take your, your uh, instrument cluster apart, which is not a big deal. Uh, and solder in a resistor. Once again, there's a thread on Yoda Tech, or if you type in like 3.0 tack resistor mod in Google and then Google the image there should be the image somewhere in there to do the the tack mod uh, your fuse box uh, this was another thing I bought from off-road solutions you will have to get power from the fuse box which normally would just run right here to the battery you'll have to get the power from there over to the battery and this is how off-road solutions designs theirs it's just a big like I think what is this probably like six gauge six or four gauge wire and just run it over there uh i would just buy the gauge your wire yourself it's i can't remember how much it was on off-road solutions but i overpaid for it it was something i could have done done myself um same thing with the battery harness if you have the battery harness for your vehicle save it uh it's kind of it's off-road solutions did a good job on this but if you have the factory battery harness you can do the same thing with it um what else i mean there's really it's one of those things where I, there's not a whole lot to it guys uh it, it's just putting a motor in if you if you've ever taken a motor out of a vehicle uh it's pretty much like that you take it out put it in uh I don't know if I went over this already, but hood clearance. There are guys that have to either run a hood scoop or cut a hole in their hood. I didn't have to do any of that. I'm running an inch and a half ball joint spacers up front. I don't know if that affects it at all, but I did not have to clearance my hood one bit. Uh, oh, here's one thing I will tell you to do. Aside from doing all the, the preventative maintenance when you first get this motor, which while you have it out of the vehicle, I would do like your timing belt, water pump, all your seals. Uh, that kind of stuff if you have the money put a new knock sensor in it uh, but one thing you ought to pay attention to is this little doohickey right here it's your IAC uh, a lot of times those get really caked up with with crap if you don't clean it out uh, it, it make your motor idle funny and you might throw a code uh, so this it's it's really hard to see but it's a little gray sensor on the bottom of your throttle body it's not not hard to miss uh, but clean that out pretty well it'll have gunk built up in it mine did uh, I think the gasket at AutoZone for it's like three or four dollars so other than that guys if you have any specific questions on how I did mine uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them uh, I can't say that I'm a whiz at these things but even a dumbass like myself is able to complete the swap uh, the one problem I am having is I am throwing a P0125 code which pretty much it's nine times out of ten in the third gen these motors come out of is an oxygen sensor code it's a coolant temp level it uh, is the actual code name uh, however I have already replaced the temp the coolant temp sensor I've replaced the oxygen sensor I replaced a couple other sensors with no change in symptoms. Uh, the engine runs just fine, but I'm getting like probably about 12 miles of the gallon in town and 15 on the city. Uh, so right now, oh yeah, I've replaced the computer too. 
I it hasn't solved any of it. So if anybody can help me out and find a 1995 T100 five speed three four uh, engine harness, I would be much appreciated.